Welcome everybody. We are going to talk about the exciting vitamin B. Uh, if you're just tuning in from vitamin A, vitamin B is going to be a lot more fun. Uh, vitamin A is pretty basic, but oh man, there's so much to vitamin B. We're going to have a good time. So let's let's get started here. Uh, I do want to point out that it is water soluble. Uh, but here we go. Different subtypes. When when you say vitamin B, you really need to specify is it vitamin B1, B2, B3. Um, there are more there's plenty more than these six listed. These are the six main ones I just wanted to cover. So there's B6, there's B9, and B12. Uh, so we're going to cover each one. Uh, each one has a different name. So B1 can also be called thiamine. Uh, not to be confused with thiamine, which is going to be a base. Uh, thiamine, thiamine, uh, there are different forms or different spellings to it. Uh, B2 is going to be riboflavin. 3 is niacin. Uh, Six is pyridoxine, nine is folate, and then the always important B12. So here's kind of the breakdown of how I did it. Typically, you're going to have uh, one slide per uh, subtype. I tried to minimize it. B12 is going to be the big one. I, I saved a few for it, um, but otherwise, I'm just going to touch upon the basics. We're going to do one slide worth of material per. So let's go ahead and start with B1. Like I said, this one is going to be thiamine. And uh, thiamine can have a coenzyme form. So the, the thiamine itself isn't a coenzyme. Uh, but when it gets converted to a thiamine pyrophosphate, a TPP, uh, that is going to actually be used uh, in a few reactions. And if you had watched my pyruvate uh, dehydrogenase video, so the decarboxylation video involved in the energy pathway, you would notice that I did cover thiamine deficiency um, as a clinical correlate. Uh, thiamine is used in the pyruvate dehydrogenase reaction, and that's where you convert a pyruvate molecule into an acetyl CoA molecule. And without thiamine, without B1, that enzyme cannot do its job. And then also you notice here alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, that's going to be found in your citric acid cycle. Uh, again, without thiamine, that enzyme can't work. So it's actually a pretty important enzyme. Um, it's also used in the synth synthesis of acetylcholine and uh, GABA aminobutyric acid. Um, here are some of the sources of it. Not the most important. Uh, it's made by a lot of things except humans. So we're gonna we're gonna ingest it from other things. But pretty much everything else in the world can make it besides us. And then here we go. Here's the deficiency. This is going to be an important one. Uh, Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome is going to be like an acute confusion, CNS problems, uh, an ataxia, lethargy, maybe into a coma. Uh, Wernicke-Korsakoff is due to a thiamine deficiency. Typically, you see Wernicke-Korsakoff in alcoholics. Uh, if you're ever asked a question, hopefully the the question writer will say. Uh, an elderly male alcoholic comes in um, with a poor diet, possibly in confusion, lethargy, maybe in a coma. They've got severe ataxia, poor coordination. Think Wernicke-Korsakoff due to a thiamine deficiency. So that's going to be more of your central problems. We look at another problem is going to be more peripheral, and that's going to be your beriberi. Uh, if I was a test question writer, I would say a uh, an African population comes in, they strictly eat polished rice, so rice without the shell, uh, which is thick in vitamins, so you take off that shell, you're left with not much thiamine, uh, beriberi. And beriberi is, you're going to have more peripheral problems. Again, you'll get ataxia, you'll get some pain, paresthesias, uh, more peripheral problems rather than the central problems. Again, it's due to a thiamine deficiency. And then lastly, you got Lieber's optic neuropathy. Uh, this is going to be a blindness. Your optic nerve needs myelination, and maybe I'll come up with another video for that. Uh, but your optic nerve needs myelination. And to myelinate that nerve, it requires a lot of ATP. And to create that ATP, you look up to that first bullet point, pyruvate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate. Those are used in the energy pathway. So if those energy, energy making molecules, enzymes don't work, 
you're not going to have very much ATP, which means it's going to interfere with your myelination, which means that it'll interfere with your ability to see, your optic neuropathy. So those are the three main deficiencies. Those are good ones. So now let's move on to riboflavin, B2. Uh, this one is required for FAD and FMN, uh, which are used in the oxidative phosphorylation. Um, also, I have listed there, they're good for any oxidoreductases. Uh, and it's also used as a food additive, and there's the uptake. Really, the main point is going to be that first one. It's going to be required uh, for FAD and FMN. Let's move on to niacin now. Niacin's a great one. Uh, why? It's because niacin itself is going to be used as a cholesterol-reducing drug. And what it does is it increases your good cholesterol, your uh, HDLs, and it's going to decrease your LDLs, your VLDLs, and your triglycerides. Those are the bad, the bad stuff you want to get rid of. So it'll increase the good stuff, it'll decrease the bad stuff. Uh, but one of the main, oh, what do you call it, side effects of this drug is going to be flushing, flushing of the skin. Um, whenever you hear niacin, you want to say niacin flush, simply because that is the main side effect of it. But it, otherwise, it's used as a cholesterol drug. There are better ones out there, such as statins. However, niacin is a good choice as well. What happens if you have a niacin deficiency? Uh, then you'll see pellagra. And pellagra is typically associated with the four Ds, dementia, diarrhea, dermatitis, and death. Dementia, diarrhea, dermatitis, and death, the four Ds of pellagra. All right, so what else, uh, what else do we have on this? It's used in the synthesis of NAD, uh, and here's your, so remember this is B3 niacin. You have nicotinic acid, or nicotinic, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Uh, where do you get your source of niacin? It's gonna be found in liver, chicken, cereal, fish, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and also note that your body can synthesize niacin unlike a few of the other vitamins that we've talked about uh, from tryptophan. And there's the daily recommended intake as well, not very important. So now let's move on to pyridoxine, uh, vitamin B6. So what do we have? Well, here's the recommended intake again, but this one is, we're starting to venture into more uh, important territory here. A little more confusing, however, very important nonetheless. Uh, required for the synthesis of glutathione, and so you convert cysteine into glutathione. And in the meantime, it's also used to convert tetrahydrofolide to N5N10-methyl-THF. And the N5N10 is going to be required for purine and thiamidine synthes uh, th synthesis. So this is going to be an important concept. N5N10, so tetrahydrofolate exists in multiple forms. Uh, it exists in a N5 form, it exists in the N5N10 form, the THF, I and mean, it's going to be in a lot of different forms. N5N10 is going to be required for purine thiamidine synthesis. And uh, it, it's really, that's all we should probably cover right now, uh, simply because that's actually a pretty confusing topic. Just remember B6 and 5 and 10. Um, and then also down there at the very bottom, monoamine synthesis. Uh, not very important, but do know that it's more of like your epinephrine, your norepinephrine, your dopamine. Those are all synthesized in the same pathway, and then also your serotonin. So here we go, folate, uh, B9. When you hear folate, think pregnancy. Uh, you typically, I mean, we can't synthesize folate, uh, but you typically get it in leafy vegetables um, as the main source. Cabbage would be a good one. Um, a whole bunch of other leafy vegetables I probably don't eat as much as I should. Alright, so what is the point of folate? Well, it's required for DNA synthesis repair. Alright, so let's think. During pregnancy, what happens? Well, you have rapid cell division. Uh, the baby is growing. Hmm, DNA synthesis and repair, rapid, rapid development. Yeah, folate is needed for that, of course. That's why all pregnant women are recommended to have a folate supplement. Um, what, cause, what, what happens if you don't have enough folic acid, uh, folate in the body? 
you'll have neural tube defects. That's a good, that's going to be a good uh, possible test question, pretty much for any level. Uh, remember, neural tube defects associated with a folate deficiency. Then what else? What else would you see? You would see a macrocytic, so a big cell, megaloblastic anemia. Um, also, you may see a impaired. Well, I guess here we go. The DNA synthesis happens because you need folate to convert DUMP to DTMP. So, um, B9. Then finally, like I promised, B12 cobalamin. This is going to be a big one. Um, I actually have a couple videos. One, how to test for a B12 deficiency. Um, I also have a couple other points about B12. Let's talk about B12 vitamin here. So we have bacteria that's produced, uh, it's bacterial produced, uh, humans can't make it, plants can't make it, fungi can't make it, other things can't make it, no, only bacteria can. Um, so as a meat eater, I would get my B12 through other meat because those animals eat stuff that have bacteria on them, possibly in their colon, that can produce B12 and I would take it that way. Uh, however, vegans, that's an interesting one. If, if you have a question with a prompt of, with uh, a vegan comes in, uh, they've not eaten any meat, they eat cleaned vegetables only, uh, that don't have much bacteria on them, they may be in a B12 deficiency state. Just simply because they don't eat the bacteria required that have the B12. Uh, there's the requirement very small, two to three micrograms per day. Uh, any excess is stored in the liver. Your liver is a main storage of vitamin B12. So what do I have here? Five hour energy. Uh, five hour energy is actually kind of a, kind of a funny one. Uh, moving back to vitamin B6, one five hour energy has 2000% the daily recommended intake of vitamin B6. So let's say you take vitamin or a five hour energy every day for the last year, you're taking in quite a lot of B6. I don't, I don't know about that. That's, that's a little strange to me. And then we move over to B12, 8,333 percent the daily recommended intake in one bottle of five hour energy. It, Wikipedia says that too much B12 really isn't toxic. Really, really nothing happens. You know, I don't believe it. Um, 8,000 percent, if you're taking a five hour energy every day, you know, that can't be healthy, but, but that's just me. Um, no literature backing that one up, maybe. Um, it just seems that's a little excessive. But uh, if you do have a deficiency, you're going to see fatigue and nervous system issues. Um, but if you take a five hour energy, you're set for probably the rest of your life. Um, all right, so let's move on. What is B12 used for? It's going to be used also for the, the uh, synthesis of DNA. So if we look back, I'm going to skip back a little. This is required for the synthesis of DNA, B9. Oh, required for pretty much the synthesis of DNA. All right, so B9, B6, and B12 are all pretty important, I would say. But I do have start at the very bottom. That is key. So let's actually talk about this. You have the most reduced form of tetrahydrofolate, so THF. And that's going to be your N5 methyl form. So N5 methyl THF. And what B12 will do is it'll convert that into your THF. Uh, your most reduced form really doesn't do much for the body. So that's why you want to convert it to a different form. Uh, if, if you have a B12 deficiency, you're not able to convert that N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate into a more usable form. So that N5 will accumulate not good. Uh, and then also you've got uh, B12 used for the conversion of homocysteine into methionine. So that really is dependent on B12 only. There's no other, there's no other enzymes or factors in your body that can do this. So let's, uh, let's, you know, I got this off of Wikipedia as well. Um, pretty confusing, especially since we're not covering it. What I would like to do is down in the bottom left portion, you'll see vitamin B12 uh, by itself with the little blue and black arrow kind of 
pointing to and from it. Uh, notice here that it, uh, vitamin B12 is required for the conversion of homocysteine to methionine uh, and also converting that N5 methyl THF into plain old THF using that blue arrow. Um, that's pretty much all I said in this previous slide, uh, just in visual format. So B12 and intrinsic factor. This is, this is good clinical correlate. So I already said that B12 is made by bacteria. Intrinsic factor is going to be made by parietal cells within the stomach. Uh, that's important to know too. So what actually happens? Well, in the stomach, you're going to ingest some B12 uh, through bacteria. You're going to eat a wad of bacteria. It'll go to the stomach and it'll bind to haptocorin. Uh, that haptocorin B12 complex uh, will migrate to the duodenum. So that haptocorin is going to protect that B12 from getting digested and it'll go towards the duodenum. Once in the duodenum, uh, the B12 will dissociate from the haptocorin and it will bind to intrinsic factor. So that intrinsic factor we just said was made in the stomach, it'll go to the duodenum as well. And that's where B12 and intrinsic factor fall in love. And they fall in love and they're kissing each other and they're, they're, they're bound to each other and they'll travel to the terminal ileus. And once in the terminal ileus, they'll uh, uh, they'll get absorbed into the intestine. Once absorbed in to the cell, they will bind to trans. Uh, they'll dissociate, and B12 will bind to transcobalamin 2. Uh, then they will go to the liver. What a journey! A lot going on. Um, but I do want to point out this clinical correlate: pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is where your body forms autoantibodies against parietal cells. So what that'll do is it'll knock those out. You'll have an intrinsic factor deficiency. And uh, this can be picked up via Schilling's test. And I have a video on that too if you just want to learn a little bit more. So here you go, the B12 deficiency test. Um, what you could do is you could do Schilling's test or you could check for levels of homocysteine and methylmalonyl-CoA. So I, I have here, you can check for homocysteine levels because B12 is required to convert homocysteine to methionine. If you have a B12 deficiency, that homocysteine will build up, therefore getting an excess of homocysteine. Also, B12 is required uh, to convert methylmalonyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA. Uh, again, you'll see a buildup of methylmalonyl-CoA. Uh, if both are elevated and B12 is decreased, you're starting to think, you know, maybe we have a B12 deficiency going on. Symptoms of a B12 deficiency, you know, great, great question. I don't know, I don't care what level you're at in college, in high school, medical school, any graduate program, you know, a buzzword is going to be hypersegmented neutrophils. If you have a deficiency in B12, hypersegmented neutrophils, awesome board question, awesome test question. Know it. Hypersegmented neutrophils. Typically, you'll have, you know, three to five segments to the uh, nucleus in a neutrophil. Uh, this one, if you start seeing six, seven, eight, nine uh, nucleuses, segments to that nucleus in the neutrophil, you're thinking, you know, they might have a B12 deficiency. Uh, and then associated with an anemia, an amegaloblastic anemia, you know, you're, you're saying, okay, spot on, that's it, B12 deficiency. And then also B12 deficiency can also give you some neurologic symptoms as well. Uh, Works cited, wikipedia.org, also my medical school education. Hope you enjoyed. Let's uh, move on to vitamin C.